Once again, um, welcome to Dan Kokuyabua TV on YouTube. Um, we, we always want to speak to our legends and let the up and coming generation know that whatever they are doing now, some have done it in the past. And this our journey has taken us to Tamale. This is Tamasco um, Staff Common Room. This is where a lot of legends um, were produced in the 70s and 80s. Remember former Vice President Ali Mahama. And then Dr. Baumia, the current Vice President, is also a former student of Tamasco. So it tells you the great men this institution has produced. And I have one of the old students here, uh, who is also a legend in football, uh, Mr. Ahmed Dauda. Um, Akwaba. No. <laughs> oh, that's we that's mix that's it up. <laughs> concentrate on the English. Okay. I don't want to commit myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We, we, we accept it like that. Okay, right. Is that all Yes, sir. Um, what are you saying? I'm not sure. 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 Okay. Right. Uh, I was with Snit. Okay. I joined them immediately I left Tamasco. Okay. So I was with Snit and I had transfers out of Tamale. Okay. In 19, I was moved to Wa. Okay. Precisely Laura. I was there for six years before I came to Mampo Ashanti. Okay. For three years and moved to Kumasi. Oh, so whilst, whilst playing football, you were still working for Snit? I was Sinit. working for Snit. I never knew. Yeah. Hey. I was working for Senate. This is news to me. Mm. So how, how were you combining the two? Well, there was that understanding between the club and then the, 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 the office. Okay. Anytime we had an assignment, they would take permission from the, my office. Okay. Give me the number of days I will be away. Okay. And immediately I'm done with that, I come back to the office. But were you under pressure combining the two? Not that. Uh, when I started as a junior officer, there was no there was no pressure on me, so I was able to combine the the two. Okay. Any time I'm in the office, I work to my maximum. Wow. And when it's time for training, I move out to go for training. Efficiency. And there was that understanding between RTU, uh, my team, and then uh, the office. Ahmed Dauda, where do you come from? Uh, well, even though our parents have settled in Tamale for quite a long time but we are not from Tamale. Okay. There's a village behind Kumbungu here. It's known as Tibung. Okay. That's where my, my, my father comes from. Okay. So definitely I'm so that, from that's where you were born and bred? No, I was born and bred. My father, after some time, left Tamale and went and settled at Ntonsu. Okay. Uh, Mampon Road. Yeah. So I was born in Tonsu. Oh, okay. And it's always Antini. Mm -hmm. <laughs> immediately he gave birth to me. He said no. He wouldn't want his children to, to be wayward. Okay. So he has to come back home. So okay. immediately I was I started growing. He moved from Tonsu and came back to Tamale. Oh, okay. So you were you were raised in Tamale? In Tamale, yes. Oh, okay. But actually I was born at G. Okay, Kumasi G. Kumasi G. Wow. I still have the birth certificate. Yeah, yeah. Then you are, you are an Ashanti by birth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And to what you Tamale, growing up, now what school are you? Zegele Ahmadiyya Primary. Okay. We are the pioneers. Okay. The Ahmadis came to establish a school here. Okay. So they had to, they, they didn't know where to get children. They had to go from house to house. Ah. And, <laughs> and they had, they, they were able to convince our parents that you are going to be teaching Arabic and then English ah, okay. in the, in the okay. school. Okay. Actually, okay. when they started, they, they started that way, okay. combining the Arabic, Arabic and, and English. English. Ahmadiyya primary. Okay. So later on, when they went into the proper syllables, they couldn't combine it again. Yeah, so okay. they just did away with the Arabic, Arabic and then went ahead with oh, the okay. secular education. So how many were you in the family? Family, 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 five, six. Yeah, we are about, my, my father had two wives. Okay. The other woman had six, and then my mother had four. Okay, so ten in all. Ten. But you were the only one who could become a, a great footballer? Great footballer, yes. Okay. My siblings started and then somewhere they, 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 fell, off. they fell off. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 
at what point did you decide that you were going to take football as a career? Uh, well, you know, I came to Tamar School. I went to Ahmadiyya Primary to... Were Zegeri. you playing coach football at the time with Ahmadiyya Primary? Course, yes. We okay. started with... Well, you know, young Chinese teams in town. Mm -hmm. I played uh, Mojo, Rolling Stones, and then Ajagwe Stars. Okay. There are days where the young Chinese, but okay. I established myself in Mysterious Dwarfs. Okay. We had a coach team in town. Hey, you had Dwarfs in Tamale? Yes, Mysterious hey. Dwarfs. <laughs> it was a big time team. Okay. Most of us who played in RTU and then really? other, we, we came from Mysterious ah, Dwarfs. So some of your mates played with you at the yes, coach level? Yes. Can you, off the top of your head, mention some of them? Yeah, this guy who just went. Mohamed Cho. No, no Mohamed Cho. The guy they were telling you. Uh, was consoling Abedi when he was crying. Yes. Tom Wiss. Okay. We played together and George, then the late Alaji Bobby. Okay. Then we we are many many of us. Oh, okay. I can't remember easily, but yeah. We, most of them came from mysterious okay. dwarfs and came to real sportive. Okay. Okay. That was our mother club. So we after had, elementary school, you, you joined uh, Tamasco? Tamasco. Oh, okay. I've, I I completed middle school form four. Okay. So whilst uh, at middle school too, you were playing at the coast level. Yeah. To the high Until level. you joined Tamar School. Even region regionals. Really? Yeah. We went to that was in 80, 1974. Went to Sunyani for interregionals. Okay. So we played so well that I established myself and then the technical school principal. Yeah. And the secondary school, they took me to their houses and promised bringing me to their school hey. when the results are out. And you know, yeah, actually, yeah. I got it. Ah. Later, the, the results were out. I, I also wrote comment trans and I passed for Yendi Secondary. Oh. And then Tamtech, automatically, anytime you pass the secondary school, the technical school to you have passed, the, Tamtech gave me admission, uh, Yendi Secondary. Hey. Ad what kick? Then uh, Sunyani Su Su Polytechnic. Mm. Their letter came, and then Sunyani Secondary. Oh, I had four letters. Wow. Because of your performance at the regional mm. level. As for Tamasco, they, it wasn't, well, they said they don't take from four levers. Ah. So I was just there. When I excelled, I was there, and Alaji Bermoshi yeah. sent somebody to my father. Uh, my father. My father didn't agree that I should leave Tamasco because I was a sick, sick, uh, sickling. I uh, was mm. always falling sick. Mm. So he was taking care he wanted of wanted it to be close. Close to him so that... Mm. Uh, so he didn't want me to go far. So Yendi, uh, Sunyani and other places, you know, he didn't like it. Oh, so, so when he, Tamasco he played, preferred Tamasco. He, he, he fell for Tamasco. Oh. Which position were you playing at the regional level? I was a midfielder. Okay. I was playing six and eight. Oh. That's at that time. Okay. Then later on, uh, I established myself as a utility player. Okay. I could play anywhere in the forward line. Okay. From six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. which, which year did you join uh, Tamasco? 74-75. In that year, we went for interregionals, and I was picked to join the National Academicals. Hey! And they were now in Yeah. Really? So that we, we played, actually. 74-75. Was it an Achampong? Yeah, oh. Achampong, Achampong wow. regime. Hey. So they picked me when I went to the National Academy because I went and met Adolf Ama and Co. Mm. There, a group of talent. There was one boy in Kumasi, they used to call him Sibo. Okay. Sibo was a champion player from Kumasi. Ah. Yes, and Ususechre. Ususechre Emba. We, Emba. Okay. we met in 1975. 76 in the National Academical. Wow, so yourself, Osu Sechremba, Adolf Amma, you all met? Yes. I, and then uh, Creme de la Creme. Seriously. Wow, wow, wow. And there was one Saki from uh, Sekendi Hazakes and okay. something like that. Okay. Yes. Oh, we had a good team. Yeah. The national team, the National Academicals. So, you schooled here in Tamar School from 74, 75 up to? Up to 81. Up to 81. I left in 79. Okay. And then came back to see from 81, 82. Okay. You still had not started playing for RTU at the time? We, I, I was already playing for RTU. Was here? Yes. Hey, which year did you join RTU? Okay, whilst 
I was here immediately, immediately I came to Form 1 in 74-75. I was then playing for Real Sportive. Okay. Who were a first a second division team, team in town in town. Okay. So they were always playing their matches. So every when I came to Form 1, my team manager will always come and see my house master. <laughs> and they established that. So every Saturday and Sunday they will see a car will come and pick me from. So my colleagues didn't know I was a footballer. Really? Yeah, so only those who knew me in town, in town. Wow. they knew I was a player. But Saturday, my, my housemates would see me go out of camp. Mm. And but they didn't know what, what, you, what you were was going, going to do. Well, you couldn't go to town as a student so easily unless mm. with an exit. Mm. There was discipline in Tamasco. Okay. So no, they were not able to go to town easily. Okay. Much more to know what is happening okay. in town. So I was always going to play my matches and come back. Only my house my master knew I was a footballer. Wow. So 75, 76, I was with Real Sportive. And then that September 76, the two teams met. Sportive and mm -hmm. uh, Tamale United. Met. Okay. And came together. The then regional minister, Kenel Zuma. Kenel Zuma came and then said, no. There's a lot of, he has seen that we have a lot of talents in town. And the teams individually cannot stay Excel. on their own. Mm. So he called them five teams oh. to a meeting. Oh, okay. So the, the idea to merge was initiated by and the then regional, regional minister. minister okay. Kenel Zuma, okay. of late, of blessed memory. Okay. He came and said, no, we have Savannah Stars, Hamatans, Bewa United, Northern United, Real Sportive. And it so happened that uh, they were sometimes were able to go into the lake. Then at the end of the season, they are relegated. No. Savannah will go in. Mm. At the end of the season, they are relegated. Mm. So he came and said, no, let me come with my soldier ideas. <laughs> so he called these five teams to a team. Which was a good one. Yes. He said, well, I'm a soldier man, but this is my idea. I see that you individually, you are all good teams, but you are not able to sustain yourself in the National League. Why? It means you are not strong enough to be in the National League. So I'm saying that for unity's sake, why don't you let us go with these five teams? Let's go back to town, ponder over it, and come back for a proper meeting so that we make it two teams from Northern Region. Strong. Two for solid teams yeah. in Northern Region. They said, okay. So he, he left them. They went away. And Real Sportive and Northern United they went and they, they came together and said, no, we have seen that we and you can come together and then to form, to real form Tamale United. a team. Oh. So let's go back and tell him that we can come okay. and we can become a team so that you bring your re and we'll bring our United. Ah. So that it will be real United. Ah. So that is the origin of the name, yeah. Real Sportive. Real Sportive. And then Northern United. United. So let's merge, and bring get, your real, I'll we'll bring, bring my United. United. <laughs> and we'll get real United. I see, interesting story. Okay. So when they went and told the regional minister, he was so excited, he said, well, it's a good idea. Let me also beg you for one thing. As you bring in your real United, uh, real and your United, let me also beg and put Tamale in the middle so that it will be real wow. Tamale United. Wow, Accepted. wow. <laughs> <laughs> what an excellent story. Ah, uh, not just it. Uh, they yes. negotiated. Yes. Okay, we are bringing real. You to you are united. But the team is based in Tamale. So you, the regional minister said, okay. Let's then, add the uh, Tamale in the middle. Okay. That is the RT you have had oh. from 76 to date. Mm. So Kanazuma had, he has a big say in RT okay. as at the formation time. <sighs> Uh, we have an uh, interesting conversation. Yeni, um, former Ghanaian international Ahmed Dauda, and uh, Edim Komo, former RTU player, and our uh, Chey, Abakwasemo, I did RTU by Northern United, Ni, Real Sportive, Ni Kabum, Eni, Nya, Real Tamale United, and uh, um, a regional minister by name um, Kenel Zuma. Ken Zuma, and uh, Kenel uh, Kutu, a champion, champion. In, the, in the regime. And as I made you know, of course, so uh, a lot of history in the course time uh, up to Tama when you had mission over Tamasco and you go so uh, teaching and common. And so, um, at the time, because you were 
real sportive player, automatically you became a yeah. LTU player. Yeah. So oh. I was one of the founding members, members. of the Together team. with which, which players? The founding yeah. members of our team? Players? Yes. Cho and Ku. Mohamed Cho. Mohamed Cho, uh, Osgood, um, uh, Fusini, okay. Farouk, Okay. Seaman. Okay. Uh, we are our first captain of Blessed Memory, Kila. Okay. Musa, Musa Kila. He was the first captain of our team. Okay. Then we have Atuga, the goalkeeper. Okay. Uh, uh, we had Lansa, okay. Alaji Yunus, Asafu, and then. Yeah, well, a host of them. A host, uh, quite okay. a number of okay. them. Okay. So you, you play for RTU from which from 74, 75 up to when? 92. Hey, so you started with Mohamed Chu and retired with Mohamed Chu. Yes. <laughs> we're good friends. We're yeah. doing it together. Everything we're doing it together. Wow. Wow. Tell us some of your memorable moments, especially matches between RTU, Kotoko, RTU, Hearts of Work. You see, it was, they had that mentality that when you come to Tamil, you will definitely lose. Mm. Apart from what our coaches were telling us, or what they were coaching us, we ourselves, some of us had traveled to the National Team. Academical okay. Center. We saw what training was. So when we came, we introduced it to some of our colleagues. Mm -hmm. So we designed our own training, training regimen. Uh -huh. okay. So every morning, myself, Kwame Danger, uh, some young guys, and then most of the senior players, we design a, 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 a road work that we're doing every morning. We had about four mil kilometer run. Hey, we we'll take it around and then come. Four kilometers? Yes. We're not doing training in the mornings. <coughs> so anytime we are not to train in the morning, that was what we're doing for ourselves. Oh. To keep fit. Oh. We do the, those runs. You know. So we had a lot of energy. So when you come here, <laughs> and the advantage was that you were talking of Caladan. Mm -hmm. You know it was a gravel pitch. Yeah. So most of them were training on some um, grass pitches. Pitch. Mm. So when you come, the way the ball will bounce on Caladan, it's not the way it will bounce on mm. your grassy field. So definitely there will be some slight difference in the movement of the ball. Okay. So that was the advantage, advantage we had. you were having. But it wasn't any full advantage because some of most of the southern teams were we also playing, playing on gravel pitches. pitches. Uh -huh. Only some few had where you have grass and then gravel. So that was the advantage we had. But all the same, we had talented players. I nearly forgot of something. So when the two teams merged, the other three teams mm -hmm. initially could not come together because they, they are the native teams in town. Okay. Hamatans. Okay. Uh, a group of indigenous Dagombes had it. Bewa United, another group of indigenous Dagombes. Okay. They had that. Okay. And then Savannah Stars were mm. uh, the, the aliens who had settled in okay. a section of Tamale. They came and formed Savannah that Stars. team. So it was a native team. Okay. So initially they didn't want to do away with their native names. Ah. So they Bewa, Savannah, Savannah, Savannah Stars Amatan. and Hamatans. So they couldn't merge initially so the original minister when they went back to him he told them that okay i told you to go and come and bring me two teams <laughs> so if these two teams are able to come together you go and no i don't want to drop you to drop any football on any of your training pitches again wow military command if you do that i will let you know that i'm a soldier <laughs> so that was initially what happened because they couldn't come together and he banned them for some time. You unite or you perish. So all these three teams had talented players. Mm. So we didn't need any southern player to come and strengthen mm. at you. So they have banned your team. If you are there and you can't play, what do you do? You join at you. You join at you. Mm. So we sat down in Tamale and we were picking the talented players mm. from the other three teams. Okay, that's that why you then had a Adai, team. Adai, Clifford Adai, Adai. Mumu Nigamel. Yeah. Ampomani, or then the late Ampomani, number three, came. Mm -hmm. Mama and Lai and Ko, they mm -hmm. came and joined mm -hmm. RTU and we became stronger. Okay, okay, okay. So finally, we had the five players of the five teams mm -hmm. coming to join RTU. It was more or less a national a team national in the team. north. Okay. okay. 
That was what happened to our two, and we didn't need any certain place mm -hmm. until when we started doing Abedi. Immediately, Abedi came and joined us. He started the southern place where I know there was a uh, heaven somewhere in the north. We can <laughs> go and join. And they started drifting in. Okay. So we were not all that good, but when they come and they get the type of training we're doing here, they are able to cope up and join the team and become good players. Can you pinpoint one memorable moment each in Kotoko Hearts games? Anytime we're playing Kotoko, it was just like Kotoko playing Hearts. Okay. And even this matter came up when I later joined the national team. We're there and Ibo Smith and Kou were saying, hey, anytime we're to come to Tamale, we're dodging training. <laughs> because we play in Tamale was too hard. Yeah. When you come, Mama and Lai will be there, Adai will be there, this guy. So you are already beaten. That because of that, they were scared of going to play in Tamale. They didn't want to come. So it isn't that we're cheating or doing anything to do here. We're training. And when Coach Edusa came and took us, we had a national coach. He had all these talented players around him. So he had no... So Coach would just close his eyes and do his selection, and then you go and get his victory. Mm. Coach Edusa, we have so much respect for him. So that, that, that was your secret? Yes. That's like you were beating Kotoko and Hearts yes. almost every time. we didn't fear any team because we felt we were equals. Yeah. Uh, we, 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 they were our equal, uh, 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 what do we say, uh, co-equals. Co okay. We didn't have any intimidation from them. Any time they were come, we feel we uh, uh, we can overpower when, them. I, okay. And that was it. Mm. But any time we are playing outside Tamale, uh, well, that cohesion was there, but the intimidation from fans, fans was always a, a bit of color. Effect, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. But we never, sometimes we never bothered because they couldn't come onto the pitch. Uh, like we were playing Kuala United and other teams. Anytime we were playing any time Kotoko has, it was a big team. It was a big game, all right. Were you part of the RTU team that uh, partook in Africa? Yes. Oh, okay. Which year was this? That was 80... No, no. I had then stopped playing. That okay. was 92. 92. But immediately I stopped playing, I was made to come and help the coaches. Oh. So I became an assistant coach. And then before we qualified for the African, uh, African club competition. We, our first assignment was in Benin. I was... On, on the like bench. A, a technical team. How did it go? Well, it was just lack of experience. Yeah. Our first time in Africa. Yeah. And well, I had even gone into coaching. Yeah. We, t myself and Coach Jamel, we, when I stopped playing, I came back and then we took the team. And then we qualified to, to go for the, so they said, no, we're inexperienced, mm -hmm. the two of us. So they will bring in Coach Aduse okay, to come to and help assist. us. So he came and took over, and we became assistant coaches. And that was the inexperience that we took to. We have never gone for any assignment that way. But we went there, and our first assignment against Benin, we, we ended it up there. Tell us about officiating. Did you encounter any extremely bad officiating in your time? Seriously. You know, there was that intimidation from the crowd anytime in the south. Mm. So that alone was influencing the referees to mm. they see that this crowd is for, for this team. If I'm not able to do something to help them, uh, I won't go home free. <laughs> and that mentality was there. Actually, we were always victims of that. Okay. We go and try our best. Sometimes the officiating will bring you down. Little Abedi Pele joined out to you, or young Abedi Pele, I wouldn't say little. How did you see him at the time? Well, Abedi, when he first came, he, we, our big man realized that he was uh, small. So they took him to Tamale Republicans. Okay. To pick up. Uh, pick up from there. And when he went there, he had ideas more than okay, the cool team. Okay. They said, no, we can't put you there. Come back and be managing with this so that you can grow with it. So when he came, we started with him. They were hitting him to get used with the knocks. And he also, from that level, he developed this
hedging, mm -hmm. how to block. Mm -hmm. yeah. Abedi started it to prevent himself. So you see him as a small boy, and when you come, he'll use the left <laughs> to block, to block you. you. And when you kick it, sometimes you can be yeah. injured. Yeah. So he started that to defend himself, and then he just started from there and grew with it. Oh, okay. So later, our, our big man started using him 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and then he started like that. He established himself. Somebody mentioned there was a match that out you were badly beating and Abedi was crying. Mm, yeah. You know, he, he wasn't that strong. Anytime we lost a match and he did well in that match, he, he has the feeling that we should have won. <laughs> he was the guy, the type who was always out for victory. If he doesn't get it, it pains him. That was Which match was, was this? The one he was crying? I can't imagine that. I can't remember that mm -hmm. match, but I remember that he was weeping and then time with Tamimu. 70, we, we won the match, but uh, we won the league. In 1978? Yes. Without him? We were second. We were second. Oh. We had a protest against Fankoba. Aguna Fankoba? Fankoba in the first round. Okay. So that was... They, they never sat on this case. They kept it until the last minute. And this FIFA order, we got to a point and they said no. All countries should bring their champions to FIFA for, for them to start the process. It's Haas we are leading us with one point. Mm. They gave Haas name to... Oh! Then later we won the protest. So? They gave us the two points. We should have... But they had given... Sent Haas of Fools name already. Their name there. But you were the champions in 78. We, yes, that was what I... If you follow the records. Wow! So we're given the two points from Fankoba, but then Haas had been declared champions. Ah! So this... And their name was at uh, CAF. So these inconsistencies and manipulations... Never started now. It oh. started uh, long ago. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the year the Pele cried uh, when no, he played as no. a folk. He hadn't come to RTU yet. Okay. Mm, he hadn't come to RTU yet. Okay. This happened... In 1978. 78. Oh, okay. When we were second. That, that was what transpired. Oh. As far as uh, what I know. Ah. We were playing and we knew how we were leading us with one point and we won that, that protest, protest. And got two points. Mm -hmm. So you overtook us with one point. But margin. they had given us their name there. So oh. we meant, they maintained it. Like you would have gone to Africa. Yeah, in but they were looking at a team coming right from. Yeah. Uh, this the women not get the experience from uh, that le le uh, the level. Okay. They taught it that way, and then they pushed us to go. Tell us about your national team experience. Mm, as I said, my form one to when I came to yeah. form one, they didn't know I was a footballer. Yeah. So you know, football was coming in the third term. First term you have cross country, second term athletics, then third term football. Oh, 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 so that was how the calendar was. Calendar arranged. was nationwide. Nation, yes. Oh. So when it get got to third term, and they announced in school here that we were to have our interclasses, we went to play the form one boys. And now here something happened. When we are, I was coming to form one in Tamar school, that was the year. The the number of students who were to come to Tamar school were up to two hundred. In 1975, wow. 200 students coming to Form 1. So they used to have A, B, C, the class, A, B, C. So in our year, they had to form the E class. Okay. So they used to call it a surplus class. <laughs> it was the, the E had never existed in Tamar school. Okay. Not knowing that all the boys in Form 1E were footballers. Hey. So immediately they announced that Form 1s were having their interclasses. We went to, form, to our class. And this guy said, I'll play number this. I'll play number from town. That's their normal positions. Wow. So we beat all the Form 1 boys. Oh, the surplus team, rather. Yes, and beat <laughs> the champions of Form 2. Wow. Then the champions of this, uh, this was a senior school. Okay. We have junior school down there. Form 1, form one boys and Form 2, and the girls were staying in the junior school. When you cross the road and come to this side, this is the senior school. 
So from three, when you leave from from two and you are coming to form three, you'll be in the senior school. Form three, form four, form five, lower six, upper six, they were in senior school. Wow. But form one boys and form two boys and the girls in Tamar school were staying at the junior school. Oh. The girls would be in the fence. They had fenced them. Then the boys, from one boys and two, would be in separate dormitories. So apart from academicals, did you ever have the chance to play for the national team? I played for academicals and played for Black Meteors. Okay, which year was this? Meteors? 78, 79. Okay. Yes. You remember some of your mates? Yeah. In 78, 79? Mm -hmm. which, which of them? Uh, there was this guy, Obri Yabua from Kotoko. Okay. Then uh, Ibrahim Babanjida, okay. Kotoko. Then Kusi. Uh, Is it Ben Kusi? Ben, no, Kusi, uh, PMK Kusi. Okay. Osofu. Okay. Kusi, Amadou Malam, and uh, uh, memory. <laughs> Old age. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was there yeah. with quite a number of them okay. we're in the Black Meteors oh, together. Okay. You know, there was a time we, they needed the Black Meteors. Okay. We came, we academicals were in camp. Okay. So they said they couldn't nest a team, so they promoted us and invited some other players okay. to come so and join the to the make up the Black Meteors. Oh, okay. But you couldn't get a Black Stars call up? Yeah, I got a call up. Okay, which year was this? That was 84. 485 84, 85, 86, doing the 86. qualifiers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Between 84, 85, 86, 87, we had a lot of quality players, but we couldn't qualify for the African Cup. Why? That was a problem. The talents, we had a lot of talented players, but as we saying, in Africa at that time, we equally had talented no quality in the other around. countries. Okay. So I, anytime I, Ghana went, okay, we're not able stuff. to make it. Okay. Yeah, that's where it's complaining or have a uh, uh, boasting of having talented players. Other, other countries also had, had quality. And they were always qualifying and then leaving Ghana. Tell us about your coaching career. Um, how has it been? After mm. quitting football, you helped out you to go to Africa. What was the next step? Immediately after you left, we uh, uh, were not able to go further with the Africa competition. I, we came back and then started working again. Then later I had a transfer, as I told you, I was working with SNIT. I don't know, because I was playing that they never gave me any transfer. Oh. But immediately they realized that you I was stopped playing. Stopped Play. It transferred in the transfer. Case. Oh, okay. So, it, so I had it, a transfer to Wa. Okay. Precisely, Laura. Okay. Upper West. In 1999. Okay. Immediately, I went there. There was a second division team there. Baptist team. I, I didn't. I didn't know anybody. I was just in my office one day. They came and said, they they have heard I'm a coach, so I should come and handle their okay. team for them. Said me, I'm a stranger. Here. I don't know anybody. Go and see my manager. He brought me here. He, you can negotiate if he agrees that was, I'll be having my working time. Yeah. I don't know what time I will use to come and coach you. And he was a Degati man. Okay. He, he wanted a team to be raised in his village. Okay, so, so he, he accepted supported. and then gave me some time off okay. from duty. Okay. So I was always going to train them. And I was fortunate to, that was a white couple. Okay. The Baptist mission people, they were mm -hmm. handling the, okay. the Baptist church. Okay. So they had a team. So they came and saw the, 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 the manager. Okay. So he said, okay, I can go. So I told them, as, as at that time, I had come to coach the national under 15. Oh, okay. Hamza, Hamza Mohammed and okay. Godwin Trump. Okay. Aziz Ansa and Ko Ose Boatin. We picked them from national oh. under 15. Marcel and Paul Latte. Okay. We kept them in Winneba for two years. Wow. So when Audu Isako and Co were exiting from the starlets, the starlets, this Hamza and Co moved in, them. and they moved to Egypt in 1997. We find, we played yeah. Brazil, and the yeah. Yeah. Brazil should have we should have won, won there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They because they used over eight players. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. so that has been your experience with the national <laughs> So that was team. where Ghana didn't do well. Because immediately from these Milo games, they took these boys, they had proper training. They knew football before they went to uh, Starless. The coaches there were just to give them tactical yeah, moves. And they had learned everything in football yeah. from their state in the Europe national under 15. Team, and okay. Okay. So the national under 15 has been your only exposure to the national team? No. In, uh, after some time, I was called to join the national under 20. Okay. Uh, with which coach? Steven, uh, I started with Malik. Okay. Later, Malik was then coaching Goldfields. Okay. He was moving from Goldfields to, to the from. national. Okay. The final told that we are paying you. Okay. So either you stay in our, uh, your okay. national team or we will leave Goldfields. Okay. And they were paying him big money. So he left time. for Goldfields. He left for Goldfields. So they brought Otia Kinti okay. to take his place. So I was assisting Otia okay, Kinti. Which year was this? We went to Malaysia. 90 Malaysia 97. Seven. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you were, so you we were part of the Malaysia 97. Morocco for the African tournament. Okay. We beat everybody there and yeah. qualified. And went to Malaysia. And went to Malaysia. Okay. Tell us about this um, manipulation from management. A lot of especially Ghanaian coaches have been complaining when you are put at the national team. It has been there for long. Okay. So not until we stop it, our coaches will never have peace. They impose players on you? They impose players on you. Wow. I was just telling uh, Anani this morning, whilst we were in Malaysia, the then regional minister, uh, um, uh, sports, sports minister. minister, our first match, before the first match, on the eve of our match, we had a meeting, a call from he said number one, number two, ah. number three, up to 11. <laughs> <laughs> we were having during the play. We knew those who, were, who had injuries and those who were doing well. The sports minister who was staying in his, in his office in Accra, Accra called you and gave you the first 11 for your first match. Yes. Ah. <laughs> and what did he tell you? I'm saying this because I want Ghana to be well. Yeah. Yeah. If we don't stop it, coaches will not produce talented players for the team. They have their, their technical moves and know those who can play those uh, things in the team. But in position of players, uh, the GFA members have their teams and players. They will force you, the coach, to call them to camp. Otia Kintin, and Otia Kintin, we do something. We were there in Winneba. Someone will send you his complimentary card and write a note, please uh, uh, allow this boy into your camp. You turn and you see the credentials on the complimentary card. You can't do anything with it. You have to call him. And what we also did was that we organized matches and invite those kind of uh, big, big men, men to come and, to come and have watch. A look. Okay. Then hey, if supporters say, who brought this boy into the team? Who the boys they have imposed on us. No, they will start exposing them. We we'll put them in matches and we'll invite them to play. It was strategic. Later, when we are eliminating them, they will see that yes, we are doing that on merit. Mm -hmm. So not until our big men will stop this thing, that our Ghana football will never uh, advance. We impose players on coaches. The coaches don't have say, and because they are giving jobs, the salaries they are paying them, they fear to talk. Do you think it happens at the Black Stars level too? Yes. Wow. Yes. If you can remember, I don't know about them, we were abreast with football. Otto Fista, Otto Fista, Otto Fista, Otto Fista time and then... Yeah. Uh, 92. There was one coach... Bukazias, Bukazias yes. He locked the uh, GFA big man outside the dressing room when he was going into the uh, uh, dressing room during recess. Yeah. He you have only some few minutes to to change the game of your 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 team, and the big men were ra rushing to the yes, dressing room. Uh, so what time will he you the Sena. The Sena. The Sena. The not not the Sena. There was one this bully guy. Uh, okay, because he too was was, was yes. a tough guy. Yeah. 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 And the next time it was on headlines that coach locked because uh, GFA locked outside the, the the dressing room. So it, it started you have some long few ago. minutes to to change the strategy of your, of team, your team and to put in confidence in your team. And they are coming to so the, what, they were, what they were time would they him? speak and then the coach would, would analyze his team. So he locked them out and it was a case. It means that um, all the black coaches face that problem. Kwesi Apia, Otuado, uh, who else? But they fear to speak. Oh. oh. They will impose players on you. Mm. Sometimes you invite those kind of players and later you can't use them to win matches. Why do you think they are afraid to speak? 
Uh, I think because their bread is buttered from them. I remember in our days in the, in the national team, a big man was able to tell us that if players can be on the bench, why can't my son be on the bench too? <laughs> was he was he as boss minister? Who? No, he, he was just a big man, one of the those who were writing a news with their uh, complimentary cards. Ah. And coaches use the reserve bench to win matches. And he was thinking that we, we are supposed <laughs> to put in uh, stupid players on the all. bench. <laughs> if, if people can be on the bench, why can't we fix his, his, son. his son on the bench and carry him along? <laughs> so these are the problems our coaches are, are facing. And they fear to speak. Today, they may have let the Ghanaians <laughs> yeah, know yeah. that, yes, yeah. coaches do have total independence whilst in our national teams. Mm. And we are telling our big men, to put we, have their, we have your teams and calling the boys to do well and they'll be invited willingly into the national teams without your imposition. Mm. So when you impose the players on the coaches, they get to a point that they cannot do substitution. Yeah. When you look at your bench and the way the game is going, you know, those sitting there, you know, they are chaff. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you tell the minister who made your first 11 for you in your first game in Malaysia? <laughs> <laughs> After that match, uh, you call and blast you. Yes, sir, next time I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> the next match, he did that for three. When we were to play Ireland, he uh, did it. Our second match against China, he did it. Uh, Our third match, and we were police pushing. That was why we lost. Oh, we were there, and then we got to quarterfinals. We beat Japan and got to semifinals. And he came, Nana Butler and Co. They will see who change uh, the, the selection today. Oh, they came. Or anybody else? If you bear, if you, you know, are you free with or anybody else? Yeah, very, very. very he, free. he was the leader of the delegation. So who, who dared you that nobody should change what they were presenting? Who was the one who was giving us the selection in, in Ghana? Let's was minister. He had come to <laughs> be a man. Butler was a GFA champ. You see this guy, uh, Akon. Yeah, uh, Richard Akon. Uh, yeah, Richard Akon. Yes, he was a player. Yeah. Eh? And he had a lot of crosses. Yeah. Anytime he gave one, two, three crosses and we don't get a goal, then we don't have luck. We can't score again. Yeah, he was a very good crosser of the ball. Of the ball. So he, the age they used for him at uh, Salas uh -huh. was not the correct age. Uh -huh. So uh, 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 in, in the under 20, he was always getting tired. Uh, because the, we were yeah. thinking he was an under 20 guy. Yeah. You see it? So you want to use him and the age will not allow him to play. Okay. So we realize it we, and we design a strategy for him. Okay. So he, we, the time we use him to get our goals, we use him for those number of minutes. Okay. And then Audu Isaka had a problem with his tie. Okay. He couldn't also play for 19 minutes. Okay. So we designed the, each half for the two of them. Akon will come with his old age and play and get us <laughs> the crosses. Then later on, when we remove him, we we'll bring in the swift tab guy, Aldo Saka, slippery. Yeah. You, and when the defenders are tired and he comes in, he makes his way and we get our goals. So this was a strategy we were using. And the, this big man didn't understand. Nana Butler didn't understand why we were only substituting Akon. Because he's from Dwarfs. Yes. Hey. <laughs> and then Stephen Apia also had his knee. Okay. And the minister didn't understand why we're also not using Stephen Apia. His knee problem, he could, could play for 20, 28, 25 minutes. And we're, so you were we're, managing we're, we managed it for him. And they didn't understand why we're always bringing him at some level of the game. Oh, God, man. So we had made Ohin Charles to understand this as the management mem head of the management team. And he liked the, the design we have made for the team. And we're getting our goals. When Audi Saka comes in and he dribbles one, two, and we don't get a goal, then we won't get a goal again. That was it. According to when he crosses this number of times and we don't get a goal, we won't get it again. So this was the strategy of the team. <laughs> and they thought we were intentionally mm. uh, doing away with his selection. So, so you, when he you came were, in, he overpowered us and gave us that selection he wanted. That's how you and lost. And Uruguay beat us in oh. the semifinals. Oh,
This is sad. Then the final match, uh, uh, third place against Ireland, the team we beat first. They beat us. In the, he did the selection again, and they beat us ah! in the third, for the third place. We were fourth in Malaysia. You should have vacated the bench for him to come and coach. No. He was their minister, <laughs> so we just allowed it. Ghana pa. <laughs> so not until this team will stop in our national teams, our teams will never f uh, prosper. <sighs> our coaches have they are getting intimidations. They will force you to invite their players into the national teams. And not to invite them but to use them. They should give their independence to to freely run the national teams. We have good coaches in Ghana who can blend the players we have to get results. But in position of players on them, no. It's not helping. We're not, it's not helping. So Malaysia 97 was your last national team experience? Yes, experience, yeah. Wow. Do you uh, intend taking up any premiership team or first division team? Uh, well. When the opportunity comes? I'm, I'm planning to establish my own academy. Oh, that's nice. In Tamale? Yes. OK. I'm, I'm trying to see if I can establish it. Wow. Wow. It is, I think it will be better off than going to take any other. Have, you, have you been following the Ghana Premier League? Yeah, when I, I left uh, France, I left Kumasi and came home. I was made to take over RTU, the CEO ship of RTU. From the abandoned league, when we started the league, the corolla came, yeah. coronavirus came, and then it was abandoned. So we reorganized and started the other league, and were so willing, we were able to play, and then we brought the team back to the Premier. So I was the CEO when we, wow. we, we, we qualified for the Premiership. Wow. So they told us that we should step aside, they want to re restructure the team. And up to now, I've not been told anything. So currently, some different people are handling the team. But actually, I came in and brought the team back to the Premiership. I was one of those who went and played the middle leg and brought the team to the Premiership. You see, monkey the work. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that is what happened. Ha. I want you to look into the uh, camera and advise um up and coming footballers Ghanaian officials who have been influencing coaches and player selection and then your fans i know a lot of people have been missing you hey where is ahmed dauda it's been a long while yeah to those who are still in, in the in the game football is a game of uh, you are there today and you are not there tomorrow it's gone professional so you are still playing whilst in action you are supposed to be paid and then all those things you get a lot of incentives signing on fees and then whatever winning bonuses and tomorrow you might not be there again so all that you're getting today you've got to invest it for tomorrow at the time that you are no more playing you also turn and look at something that you have put aside and you can rely on it with your family and then or to help the family. So football is a game that will let you go in and get an injury that will stop your career forever. So you don't know when you have to stop playing. Either you play to your retirement time or it is an injury that will stop you from playing. So strike harder whilst the iron is hot. The money you are getting today, invest it so that tomorrow you can rely on that to take care of yourself and your family. Then to those who are football, uh, the big men in football who are handling football, the game has gone professional. Individuals used to handle teams. It's no more. We need to look for sponsorships for teams. The money that an individual can, will use from his pocket cannot run a team. The players are supposed to sign, they are supposed to sign and then be on a particular salary, on a signing on fee. 
if uh, there's no sponsorship, monies that will be given to these boys will be little. And they wouldn't be so happy enough to be playing freely for the team. So let's look for sponsorships for our teams that will help run the players and the players are now professionals. They will get their professional monies from their salaries, their winning bonuses and a sign on office that they can also rely on and take care of their families. And to support us, if you say you love a team, it's not just from the math. Ask yourself, what do I do to help the team? When they rally around for supporters, you avail yourself to be there. When they say we need 100,000, so we are the supporters, how do we get the 100,000 for them? So you organize yourself as supporters in a way that you can also uh, get revenue for the team, get money for the team. Because the sponsors are coming in with their money. Supporters, too, you've got to do something to help sustain the team. On the day of the match, it's a common thing in Ghana. People will go and line up on the, by the gate, wanting someone to let you go in free. The one CD or five CDs or ten CDs you also use to pay at the gate is what you are using to help the team get money and take care of the players. It's not only the big men. The big men are now tired. Most of them are no more working. If they are not uh, professional workers or uh, uh, what businessmen, they wouldn't get money regularly to be running the team. So at a point, if the big man has no money, the team will not have money. And if the team doesn't have money, the players will always be hungry. And he can't come and train with an empty stomach and go home with an empty stomach. So my advice is that the three bodies, the players, the big men handling the teams and the supporters, is a, a united thing. The players are there to play for the team. We have to do whatever we have to do to take good care of them. Their medications, their welfare, and everything should be taken care of. A player should not get sick and then stay two, three days without medicine. The big man should do well, get him relief. They take, uh, the uh, medical men should always handle that immediately. Injuries, a quicker way of healing injuries for them to come back and play. Then the big man too, when you get sponsorship for your team, you'll be free. Then the supporters too, you also, don't, don't underrate your one CD. Give it to them. Go and pay and enter. Don't go and enter free. When you enter free, the field is uh, full of supporters, but there's no money to take care of the players. Thank you, sir. It's been a very interesting conversation. Ura uh, Dauda Ahmed, um, he, he was exceptional, right from Tamasco. Up uh, to our TU, about black meteors, about black stars in the 80s. National and uh, about national academic hours, a man in coaching history. He's contributed so much to Ghana football from his personal career, then eventually becoming a coach. Now, only a dink, come over, brave. And come on, dear, a do baby, Nami Raho, Tinamit Mimisan question, Bill. Say, Ghana, a court tournament. Now, on my money, na your dear support, a touch. Your TTV home bomb pie, no minister, no air selection, near Colus, near Bah, near Betana, near you. And he refused over three or four. Same penny for now, more running football, more fun of cray, and in your misro, and running Ghana football, no minor, and couldn't him because talent in our own your play and you would deny no access no. A china, the absence never affects Ghana national team no, na ye na ye and say we eat, na ye so. Thank you so much once again. Right. That's it. Thank you.